fighting the war against major crime. There's a new team of officers out on patrol. Handpicked. Their task to tackle the most hardened criminals. Get on the floor now. Meet the Sentinels. I want to catch bad guys. I want to get in people's faces. Accept nothing, believe no one, and challenge everything. The latest police tactics revealed for the first time. They drive the fastest police cars on the road. We are left, left, left. Risk is high. It's crashed, it's crashed. Decamp. They use targeted live criminal intelligence. It's a black Bentley Continental. With the help of an all-seeing matrix of cameras. It should be hitting them within the next 60 seconds. Open the window! Oh, you're going to smash! Open the window! The result? Criminals face overwhelming force. We're going to make life as difficult for them as we absolutely can, again and again and again. The most wanted hunted down. Yeah, whoever it was, he floored it. In a deadly game of cat and mouse. Be advised, he's violent. Don't stop. Listen, I don't give a he's got warning signals for weapons. This vehicle is possibly involved in human trafficking. Open the door. These are the Sentinels. This is where the excitement really starts to build up. And this is Fast Justice. Coming up. Look here. Hello. A shocking case of human trafficking. The Sentinels bust a drug deal in broad daylight. Police, stay where you are. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Keep your hands where I can see them. And a renegade legal warrior takes on the establishment. What you're doing is no more than Dick Turpin was doing for the people over robbing their cash. The Sentinels are an elite vehicle-borne unit. This team of eight, one of three across Suffolk, is led by Sergeant Mike Moon. Evening, guys. Uh, thanks for coming in a bit later today. Tonight, the team are on a late shift, hunting criminals into the night. It's one of several evening shifts they have every month. Obviously, a bit darker. It's going to be a bit more difficult to spot the vehicles. Thank you. Sergeant. OK. The Sentinels enjoy hunting at night, but picking out criminal cars and getting a good look at the occupants inside can be harder. Sergeant Mike Moon is on control this evening and almost immediately spots a vehicle of interest. Got a red Sir Alhambra, um, which is quite a distinctive color. It's linked to modern day slavery. Yeah, we can get it. We can get that. Yeah. A two from St Matthew Street. Dan and Woody fight through the early evening traffic to try and find the car. A lot of queuing traffic leaving via Norwich Road, so we've got a chance. Modern day slavery is a crime that hides in plain sight and is difficult to detect within the community. Any opportunity to disrupt the organized gangs who deal in human lives is a top priority for the Sentinels. Traffickers are ruthless and they will sell people a story about a land of promise and honey and the reality is that it's a, a, it's a life of servitude and crime. It's gonna be in this lot, it's gonna be in this lot. In A2, Dan and Woody spot the car in the busy rush hour traffic. It's just pulled into the filling station. They box the car in, and Dan goes to investigate. Stops on vehicles associated with human trafficking are complicated. Hello. How are you? Often involving both gang members and their victims. There are two occupants inside. What is your name, sir? Josh, my name, please, sir. Come on. You must have your ID. Why wouldn't you have your ID? The men in the car claim to have no ID on them. Dan digs deeper. Where are you going? You're just going to this garage and nowhere else? After the garage? Where do you go next? Both occupants are Romanian and claim not to speak English. 
For Dan and Woody, it's a tricky language barrier to deal with. You haven't asked me where you're going after this. On control, Sergeant Moon starts checking the names they've given Dan. The passenger claims to be only 16 years old. But it appears he already has a rap sheet associated with slavery. Um, he was arrested a week ago for resist or obstruct a cop. On arrest, he's found in possession of three Visa debit bank cards in the names of other workers. In fact, there was just the two of them in the car. He didn't have any idea on him, but he gave his name and he came back as being well involved in running modern-day slavery as opposed to being a victim of it. I think given that this is linked to organised crime and human trafficking, um, there's sufficient for a stop search based off that intelligence. Yes, thank you. We're going to detain you for a search. OK, put your hands around. We're going to search you. OK, under section one of PACE, for any items on you that may be stolen. What we have is a significant issue in this area with um, Eastern European crime groups running Eastern European migrant workers. They keep either identity documents or their, their pay cards in, in their control and don't allow the workers to have it. Woody continues searching the passenger. Who's is this? No, it's my father. And finds another new bank card that has a different name on it. Your father? Yes. What's your father's name? It's a monster English. No, of course you don't, because you don't want to go answer that question, do you? Control, we've got um, I searched the passenger. He has got a bank card in the name of somebody else. He oh, told me it was his um, father's card. I'm presuming it isn't, because he couldn't remember his name. And he's got a wooden nose, which is growing by the moment. Dan deals with the driver, checking his insurance details. You need the eight? What? Oh, my word. I mean, it's there, in, it's there in Romanian for you now, and you're still trying to avoid the question. He suspects the driver is hiding behind the language barrier. What is their date of birth? So he uses a translation service on his phone. I don't know exactly. I call now. <laughs> How come sometimes you can speak a fluent sentence like that, and then the rest of the time you're playing dumb? What is your relative's name? Woody is also using a translator to get to the bottom of who the passenger's bank card really belongs to. Who is he to you? No. The passenger's story now changes. A1 to control, just so you're aware, he's only um, card owner is his uncle. But without being able to prove the card has been stolen, Woody's hands are tied. Where, where does his uncle live? even though he doesn't believe the card belongs to an uncle who is apparently no longer in the country. He doesn't live in the UK anymore? No, not anymore. No, that's why he, uh, he said that uh, she left bank account with him. So uh, she can't receive any money, so he can uh, withdraw it for him. OK. And um, how long ago did he leave the country? Saturday. Saturday. OK. Woody and Dan have no choice but to let the driver and passenger go on their way, but they're not letting the matter rest. So we're going to seize the bank card and send it back to the bank, OK? You're much older than 16, aren't you? Sergeant Moon doesn't believe the passenger's story either. He's convinced there is something far more sinister going on. I think um, what would be sensible is to conduct a welfare check. We've got a unit free that can do that so arranges for other Sentinel teams to check out the address the passenger gave for his so-called uncle to find out his true identity. It's potentially a trafficked individual, potentially, um, or uh, a migrant worker who is being exploited. But when the Sentinels get to the house, what will they find inside? In Ipswich, Woody and Dan have stopped a car connected to modern-day slavery. What's your father's name? It's a monster English. No, of course you don't, because you don't want to answer that question, do you? Sergeant Moon has dispatched two other Sentinel units to an address linked to a bank card found on one of the men. 
With concerns for the owner of the card, they plan to carry out a welfare check. But if the occupants refuse to let them in, the Sentinels won't have lawful grounds for entry. From which direction will you be approaching? We just held up traffic lights. Sophie and George rendezvous around the corner with Sam Chittock and Sam Maples. There is more intelligence that the address could be housing trafficked migrants. Officers went to the address about two weeks ago, and as they went round the back, people were trying to get out through the back, and there was about 10 people in the address. It's in poor condition, children are there, there's only one toilet and wash area, and there's a high turnaround of new faces regularly appearing at the address. The Sentinels face a difficult situation. They know that if the people inside are the victims of trafficking, it's unlikely they'll comply with police through fear of reprisal from gang leaders. I do feel sorry for these individuals, genuinely, um, because they are vulnerable and they are exploited. Hello, police. Can you open the doors, please? These are not bad people. These are not criminals. And it's really important for us as police to remember that they are victims. With the knowledge occupants have previously taken a quick exit through the back door, Sophie isn't taking any chances. Hello. Hello. You all right? How many people are in here? Yeah, I'm speaking English. OK. There were over 5,000 slavery offences recorded by the police in England and Wales at the end of 2019, an increase of 51% from the previous year. One, two, how many? Six. Six. Inside, there are currently six people, two of whom are children. The Sentinels start their investigations. How long have you lived here? Who do you pay that money to? They discover several mattresses in almost every room. Hello. It seems there are multiple occupants living here on a rotation basis. Hello. Do you live here? Do you have your ID? No, speak English. All of the residents appear to be from Romania. You live here? Do you speak English? No, none. So the Sentinels rely on a modern day app for policing, voice activated language translation. Are you here of your own free will? Yes, they are here. But upstairs, Things are about to take a darker turn for Sam Maples and Sam Chittuck. I popped upstairs just to make sure that there were no other people there. Um, a few of the rooms were locked, but I'm in one room, there's a male in there on his own. Close the door. Matthew here. But I'm speaking quite quietly. It established he seemed quite afraid and didn't really want to talk to me um, in the earshot of anyone else. What are their names? What are their names? Not yours, Mafia. He kept repeating about the Mafia, so it's quite obviously the alarm bells are ringing a little bit. The man appears to be afraid. But is it because of someone currently in the house? Do you have any bank cards? No. Bank cards. Can we have to get a proper interpreter? Up until this point, the Sentinels have relied on the translation app. But to help keep the man at ease, they get a human interpreter on the phone. Who is the what more will you be beaten up for? I <laughs> I was supposed to be 
Да ти кой е това, дете? И мафия, моля, да коментираш, че ва, да ти им ще бота и ще ми ги бати. Това е как мафия, нали? И ако коментираш нещо, ти си в Okay, is he happy to come with us now to a station and talk to us further in a safe place? Having established that the man is extremely vulnerable, the team now need to work out how to remove him to a place of safety. We're obviously letting people know via the radio what was happening when Sarge back at control was putting in kind of wheels in motion to get safeguarding and other units aware of what was going on. It's up to you there. Huh? Um, can you just let him know that we're going to take him to a safe location at the police station? Um, we'll get an interpreter there and we'll speak to him further, but he'll be safe. Okay, that's fine. Tim, we'll keep him safe. It's an important result for the Sentinels. Although there's not enough evidence to identify and arrest gang members, they may well have saved a life. But with so many people left behind and unwilling to talk, it does leave unanswered questions. It's a difficult job. Um, we can't say for certain that none of those other people in that house are not victims of uh, modern day slavery or human trafficking. But for whatever reasons, they just don't feel ready to come to us yet. Go around the side. Sit yeah. in the side wall. So to have someone tonight come to us and ask for help um, is a big step. The man later chose not to give a statement on what happened to him in the house. But he now lives in secure, supported accommodation away from the gang. Forty-five miles east of Ipswich, the Lowestoft Sentinel team rule the road. The start of every shift, before their hunt for criminals begins, always allows an opportunity to discuss important matters of the day. You know you have to have it in your butt now, don't you? What, the blue jack? Yeah. You do, seriously. Danny. You do. We have a bit of a dark sense of humour, but that gets us through the shift. You have to ask them when you get there. Just bend you over, take your pants off, Dang, and I'll bet you they'll stick it in the <laughs> That bit of downtime and a bit of a, a laugh with colleagues does help. But as soon as they hit the road, everything focuses on targeting criminals, especially the war on drugs. The lowest off team often work alongside a specialist police unit. They are a plainclothes drug team who might spend days, sometimes weeks, um, either doing a, a directed surveillance of an area or just out doing street work. On patrol in car 90 are PC Chris Smy and Sergeant Lee Simons. What's the registration of an I'll get it broadcast? Requests from the plainclothes officers start coming into Sentinel control. Our drugs team, our plainclothes team, have just seen um, a drug deal occur. So we're going to try and stop that vehicle and see who's in the car uh, with a view to hopefully searching those people inside. Following the sighted drug deal, the suspects have since driven into a petrol station. Lee and Chris in the unmarked car face a race across town to catch it before it can make off. Vehicle for a Volvo V50. Yeah, that's received. We're currently um, waving drive. PCs Mark Williams and Jess Collison call sign 91 and nearer to the location and also join the hunt. We're out of the nick. We're artillery way now. We're heading north. The plainclothes officer has his eye on the suspect car at the filling station and he's relaying information back to the sentinels. He said there were two males inside, but then made mention that there was um, possibly someone in the back seat, but potentially three up. 
Time isn't on their side, as both units have to work through the busy lowest off traffic and hope the suspects don't get away from the lone officer. Do you want to go into the service station first block at half and we'll follow you in? Yeah, we're uh, just crossing the bridge. Lee and Chris take the lead in the unmarked car. The suspects have no idea they're about to get jumped by two Sentinel units. OK, you ready? Yeah. Let's do this strong. Can't see it, can't see it. There it is, there it is, there it is. They were unaware that police were anywhere near them, so it was get out, get hold of them, get them cuffed, get them searched. Go. Police, stay where you are. Show me your hands. Show, Show me your hands. hands. Keep your hands, hands out where I can see them. Do Show not make any movement. Keep your hands where I can see them. The Sentinels are hunting a car believed to have been involved in a suspected drug deal. Go. Police, stay where you are. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Keep your hands out where I can see them. Do not make any movement. Keep your hands where I can see them! We definitely caught them by surprise. They weren't expecting us to turn up. Don't. Keep it out! OK. We've seen you, you've been involved in a drug deal, OK? Have you got anything on you shouldn't have? No. Nothing at all. The front seat passenger is the man believed to have been involved in the drug deal. Right, you're detained under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act. Have you got anything on you that you, you shouldn't have? have it. Which pocket, sir? Uh, right in the pocket. OK. Exactly. OK. The results of his deal are quickly revealed. Is that all you've got? Yeah. OK. I'm just going to take that out, OK, and put it on the roof. OK, just with your phone. Sign zero control. Go ahead. As Hodzi carries out checks on the two men, Thank you, person check, TNT and local, please. It seems the driver has form for receiving mysterious packages in the post. Yeah, it looks like he tried to um, get a package sent to him um, which had cannabis in it and was intercepted at the delivery office in Lowestoft. That was April this year. Yeah, that's received. There's a couple of bits, but nothing mega. Yeah, we might be able to deal with this by way of a caution, OK? He's taken off to the station for questioning about the deal he was involved in. Okay, just watch your arm. Where he was later given a caution, leaving Mark to deal with the second suspect, who seems an unlikely getaway driver. How old are you, young man? Uh, 62. I love the young man. Well, you never know these days. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use drugs yourself? No, and the guy not here about back. Do you use cannabis at all? Oh, I'd say now and again. I think I had one last night. I did about eight o'clock. He doesn't have any cannabis on him, but has admitted to smoking it the previous evening and driving today. A risky thing to do when there are sentinels about. Currently, the driver, I was having a chat with him and he stated to me that he had some cannabis last night. So I'm just going through a uh, cannabis drug wipe with him. So if you just roll your tongue around the inside of your mouth, and then hold it out for me. Let's do three little swipes. One, two, three. How long is that stuff staying, do you think? Depends how strong it is, how much you've had. It's a nervous eight minute wait for the driver. If I was in a room, we were just quite often at him still. Yeah. I can be chilling in a room with somebody and I can be smoking that stuff on half of the other. Yeah. Have all got watch out for that? My advice would be stay away from it, but it's <laughs> not, not, not always that easy, is it? Yeah, I do. Sorry. <laughs> If he has been drug driving, he will likely lose his licence and face a big fine. As long as eight minutes you'll ever have. It's the driver's lucky day. Two good clear lines on the control line and nothing on the test line. So it's a negative result. OK. All right. So uh, we're all good. But the jury is out as to whether or not he has learned his lesson. Your key's on the roof. You just be mindful, obviously. Smoking yeah, cannabis yeah, and driving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, if you're going to drive the next day or the next couple of days, just don't bother. People do get this misunderstanding that they can have a, a joint with cannabis in and then drive the following day. Simple rule is don't smoke cannabis, don't drive if you smoke cannabis. Back in Ipswich, it's early afternoon. At the Sentinel South HQ, 
Mufti is in the control room. With 17 years on the force, he's one of the most experienced members of the Sentinel team. It's exciting in the control room. It's obviously different to being on the street. I do my job because I want to help the public. I want the public to feel protected. I want them to feel that they have a police service that is looking out for them. Patrol in the streets of Ipswich are Sentinels Dan Newson and Sam Chittock in A2, who are having a pretty uneventful day. What would you say is more quintessentially English? A red phone box or a red post box? Oh. <laughs> Good one. Good. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think post box. Back at base, Mufti spots a suspicious blue Mercedes van with the potential to liven up their day. Mm. Vehicles activated a camera in the town may contain a male who is wanted for a fail to appear warrant. Motor vehicle offences obstruct, resist a constable and speeding. Number of offences for which it is failed to attend call for. Hey, team. Awesome. Failing to appear in court can carry a prison sentence of up to 12 months. When the owner of the vehicle is a persistent offender well known to Dan and Sam. It's yours if you get him. No, it's yours. He's your man. It's yours. I couldn't possibly. I get too much grief. Not for me. Ciao, mate. Lovely. Lovely. The Sentinels hunt best in packs, so George and Sam Maples in car 84 are called to help track down and corner the Mercedes van. Uh, 84, if you cover Ranley into Yarmouth Road, Chevalier Street, we will cover all the way in from St Matthews. 84. Chevalier Street seems clear. Do you want us to go straight Sam Valley Road? Commit Valley Road. Received. Now on Valley Road. Just for info, warning may fail to stop. The Sentinels close in. And just three minutes after number plate recognition cameras first spotted the van. Yeah, is that him? Could well be, yeah. Could well be, yeah. Dan and Sam have their man, with a little bit of help from the afternoon traffic. You want to pull over a little bit for us and we'll chat to you there, get you out traffic a little bit. Hold on a minute. Nice. What, what's this over? Just checking the vehicle out. What have I done? Nothing at the moment. Right, then, then what's this about? We're just checking the vehicle in section 163. Sure, I don't out. wish to contract with you. Straight away, he didn't want to contract with me. What's your name, sir? Uh, I don't wish to contract with you. I don't wish to contract with you. I've never heard anyone say it before. OK, well... I don't wish to contract I'll take that out, then, for now. I have absolutely no idea what that means. I'll Sorry, take that out, then, for now, yeah. because... I want to make sure that this car's insured. Oh, yes, what's your name? Of course it's insured. I'm oh, the, give I'm me your name, then. No, I don't wish to contract with you. Contract or no contract, yeah, Sam Chittick gets straight to the point. Yeah. There's currently a fail, fail to appear warrant outstanding for you. OK. OK, so I'm arresting you, Furniture Spirit at court, OK? You don't have to say anything. The main hand of defence, if you don't mind question something which will allow in court, anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you understand that? An arrest has been made. But before they can get going, Dan and Sam catch a whiff of something else. They smell quite strongly of cannabis in here. Uh, I don't see contact with you. You always say that. Because that smell in here is quite strong from in the vehicle, I'm also going to detain you on Section 23 of the Mrs Drugs Act. For a search, OK? Despite being arrested for failing to appear in court for a number of offences, the driver still doesn't seem to grasp the concept of law and order. Under, under the constitutional rights of this country, what yeah. right have you got to be stopping me? There's a warrant out for your arrest, sir. For what? For failing what? to appear at court. There is no legitimate court yes, in this country. OK. There, there is no legitimate court in this Fine, country. That's something you can talk about the court then, isn't it, all right? Well, I don't wish to contract Fine. with you. What about the car for you? No problem. You don't have to contract with me at all. No, no problem. He is of the opinion that the only law there is is common law, but I think the courts would probably disagree with that. What we'll do is... Because of the strong stench of cannabis coming from the van, the situation has changed from simply getting the driver to custody. The vehicle will need to be searched from top to bottom. It is all coming to light. Will you do some searches? 
In the control room, Mufti is digging up the Sentinel's intelligence on the man in the van. He's a full license holder with no points. Yeah, previous for cannabis cultivation by the looks of it. Okay, fine. Should we get the chair onto the pavement and then I'll pat him down? Yeah. Both 83 and 84 have arrived to help with the investigation. He's been detained, so yeah, the vehicle is being searched under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act. Thanks, Sophie. Whilst Dan searches the driver for any dangerous items. Have you got anything on you you shouldn't have? No. No, no sharp object? No. This renegade legal warrior's pockets may be empty, but he's still refusing to recognise the Sentinel's legal authority. I'm in the middle of my day of work. Fair enough, but the court have issued a warrant for your arrest, so we've got to act on behalf of them. It, there is no law in this country. There's common law. That is it, common law. Dan's pat-down search has come up empty, but the same can't be said of the van. Did you see the glove box here? Okay, the small black container. Um, it's got a small amount of cannabis in it, which is a remnant of what the gentleman's been using. How much cannabis are we looking at? Very, very small amount, mate. Um, just remnant, mainly. It may be a small amount, but being in possession of a Class B drug is still illegal. I'm further asking you on suspicion of possession of cannabis, OK? Can I take a seat for us? But this seems of little relevance to someone who considers themselves above the law. You can hold on to that seat now. We've been back and two with the courts over this so-called driving offence, right? When there is no such thing as a driving offence. Sentinels are elite officers with years of specialised training under their belts, but that doesn't stop the man from educating them on the law. Unabetted. What you're doing when you're pulling people over is no more than Dick Turpin was doing pulling people over and robbing their cash. I've been called a lot worse things than Dick Turpin. I find it quite entertaining. He had his conspiracy theories. I was quite happy to listen to him. Well, England is just falling apart, that to see. It's certainly sometimes more interesting than sitting in silence. We have been lied to, lied to and lied to about everything. So don't suppose you believe in speed limits? I don't. Can I put my foot down to get you? No, I believe in everybody taking responsibility for their own actions. We the Sentinels will be hoping this judicial rebel finally takes responsibility for his. You haven't got the right to tell another man what he can and can't do when he's causing no harm or no loss to anybody else. Another afternoon shift in Ipswich. So far, I'll be back with you. Dan and Sam are paired together again. But before they can tackle Suffolk's most wanted, they've got to tackle lunch. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Vicar. Sorry, Dan. If you want a double of mine, a triple of mine, you can have it. I'm not, no, because you only got one double yesterday. <laughs> Everything. And in a brief moment of downtime, Dan decides to put Sam's general knowledge to the test. Here's a American state quiz question for you. What two states start and finish in the same three letters? Mm. Idaho and Florida. Thankfully for Sam, the lunch break is soon over. Clear lift. And their afternoon is about to get a lot more interesting when they get behind a car that has just passed them several times in a matter of minutes. What sort of route is this? They decide to follow him. That's where I'm coming. Who's looking at you? and then give the stray driver a pull. Back. Two from White House. I'm just going to take details from you again. Let's take you. didn't have anything to hand. Hello. You're doing an incredibly strange route. Do you have your driving license on you, please? On control is Mufti, who's made aware of call sign 82's intuitive stop. 8-2 in the queue. Receive, Sam Chiswick, go ahead. Thank you. Um, stationary attendant vehicle check, please, on um, Bowell Road. Are you delivering? Yeah, delivering. 
What address are you delivering that to? It turns out the erratic driving is simply down to a lost takeaway delivery driver. Yeah, where are you taking it to? All the same, Mufti digs into the driver's details. A non-license holder, six points on a ghost license. Now, a late delivery is the least of this driver's worries. You've got uh, six points for no insurance from July, driving without insurance. We're going we're to be seizing this car. Whilst Dan and Sam wait for the uninsured driver's car to be seized, a passing white van triggers their built-in number plate recognition camera. Attention. Sam immediately radios Muffley on control for more intel on the vehicle. Citroen van, um, she's gone past us Borough Road towards um, what I believe will be Stoke Bridge, then towards Novotel. Mal in vehicle, engaged in drug deals in Ipswich. Dan and Sam decide to hold tight while they are to finish seizing the uninsured driver's car. Their loss is Sophie and Woody's gain. Yeah, we're Greenway Street at the moment. Who immediately give chase to the van. With Sam Maples and George Harvey and 8 4 hot on their heels. This is the one. This is the one. Both vehicles are a few roads away from the suspicious white van. Oh, we just need to catch up with it. But the turbocharged Sentinel BMWs can reach speeds of over 155 miles per hour. And with the roads clear of the rush hour traffic... Yeah, we're just hey, hitting the hey. roundabout. Oh, you're in our sights. Catching a Citroen Kangoo is child's play. Big old straight on Borough Road. We'll go for a stop now. As Sophie and Woody in 8-3 pull over the van, 8-4 arrive in front of them to block in the driver. An expert move. Fantastic stop. <laughs> Even if they do say so themselves. Hello, how are you? Right. you right? A van with strong links to drug dealing means that the Sentinels consider the driver to be potentially dangerous. Oh, are you? No worries. We'll just grab some details from you for sorry. Because of the driver's previous brushes with the law, he is taken to a nearby police station for a strip search. Oh. So many Where is it? Checks on the passenger. Uh, no intel on her. Reveal a clean sheet. Nothing untoward so far. But when Sophie searches the vehicle, she makes a sinister discovery. I definitely want to see about a wipe. There is the top of a crack pipe and spent wraps, so we might want to just look at that. There's a spoon up here as well, Woody, so there's obviously obvious use. There's clear evidence of drug use within the vehicle. There is part of a crack pipe in there. There's spent wraps, a spoon, lighters. He's just been taken to the local police station for a strip search, so we're just going to await the outcome of that um, search. Chilly out here. <laughs> Pleading guilty to personal use of Class A drugs can result in a formal caution or a large fine. Oh, so from freezing. I'm really cold. But it's an underwhelming result for the Sentinels, who are looking for evidence of dealing. I think we've got it on the wrong day. But There's nothing much in the car, is there? We've got him on the wrong day, haven't we? Let's We've got him when he's um, running around his missus. Ugh, oh, sucks. Sometimes you haven't got what you want, um, what the intel gives you the picture for. We know what he's doing. We know why he's driving the van about a lot of the time. He is involved in, in criminality, and we want him off the road. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you somehow. <laughs> The driver's strip search at the station is clean, so he's returned to his van at the roadside. If the Sentinels can't get anything on him, he'll drive away scot-free. But Sophie and Woody have one final card left to play. Control, are we happy to go with the drug wipe? Yeah, drug wipe has been authorised. All right, let's do it. Let's go with it. But if you just pop yourself out and come and stand on the, dry, on the path for us. There's evidence of possible drug use in the vehicle. We're going to require you to provide a roadside saliva test for drugs. 
you just um, stick your tongue out for me. Thank you. It's now a waiting game for the results of the drug wipe. So far, the driver has been pretty compliant. Maybe this won't be the Sentinel's day after all. But a casual admission suggests otherwise. Did you smoke cannabis a couple of days ago? Is that right? Last night. Last night. Okay. I'm worried because it's a bit strong. <laughs> you got some good stuff. Yeah. There's loads of rappers in that van. I know that. I just haven't cleaned my van out, do you know what I mean? Was you previously using crack? Yeah, no. crack and coke. Crack and heroin, yeah. Mm. Eventually, the white begins to show a result, but it's not quite clear enough to make a decision. Is that coming up on that? Is that coming up on the line? Or is that just me seeing things? When you do a roadside drug test, it's very similar to a pregnancy test, yeah. It, it literally, you get one line to tell you what's working, and you get another line to tell you that that person's got something in their system. After a tense 20-minute wait, the results are finally in. And something doesn't quite add up. You say you've never used... You don't use cocaine. It's cocaine. Yeah. It's come back as positive for cocaine. <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't took my cocaine, so just take it to the police station and do a blood test. OK. All right. Um, it has come back as positive for cocaine, so for that reason, I'm going to arrest you for driving whilst over the prescribed limit. After being compliant for so long, the driver has reached the limit of his patience. Do I get interviewed over this as well? Because you've been fiddling about with that test a lot, haven't you? This is an indication. This isn't evidential in any way. So I can't put any blood. I can't put anything in your blood, can I? No, you've just you, you squeezed that. That was all right, didn't you? Go and you just squeezed something from me. It's come up positive for cocaine, which I don't even take. He's accused me of tampering with it. I can't put stuff in his blood, so I don't know, really know where he's going with it. He was just sitting in there a minute ago, pumping something. You, you've done it once, and then you opened it up again and pumped it again. Pumped what? Don't know, you've done something with it. I'm pumping. I'm I'm going. OK. I've got to go to the police station. I'm going to wait about an hour. I'm going to the police station for about an hour. Oh. All right. The long, hard goodbye now over. Hello, it's PC Wood from Sentinel. Um, and you've got one en route to your cells for uh, drug drive. The driver will next get to see his girlfriend after his blood has been tested for drugs back at the station. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. At the time of filming, the man was released while awaiting the results of his blood test, and the investigation was still ongoing. It's the end of another day disrupting crime across Suffolk. Whether it's protecting possible victims of modern-day slavery, taking down suspected drug drivers, or working together to eliminate suspicious vehicles. It's all part of the five-star service from the Sentinels. <laughs> <laughs>